Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall, moderator of these mystic meanderings. As you must surely know by this time, certainly we remind you of that fact often enough, the detective story was invented by our own Edgar Allan Poe, for all the good it did him. Poe died virtually of starvation. Arthur Conan Doyle, an Englishman, took all of the principles laid down by Poe and proceeded to make a fortune with Sherlock Holmes. Whoever said life was fair? This first Mark Twain no end. And so, determined to strike a blow for America, he wrote a satire to put Conan Doyle in his place. And in this battle between the titans, all of us are the winners, as you are about to hear. Inspector, I've been robbed. Of what? An elephant. And now of a, a white elephant. Well, uh, what do you want us to do? I want you to find him for me. Find an elephant on the streets of New York City and a white elephant at that? Well, I realize the digital day. If you lost a dog or a cat or even a pet mouse, well, I'd offer a reward. This will tax our resources to the utmost. With so many places of concealment, how does one find a stolen white elephant? Is this task beyond the powers of the New York City Detective Force? Sir, nothing is impossible for a New York detective. Our mystery drama, The Stolen White Elephant, was adapted from the Mark Twain classic, especially to the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Robert Dryden and Ian Martin. It is sponsored in part by Time Magazine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Well, your uh, big TV debate will be on the air in 30 seconds, Senator. Fine, Hank, fine. Don't worry, sir. You're the incumbent, and I'll feed him up. Right. Okay. Oh, there's your opponent now. 20 seconds, gentlemen. Hank, what's my opponent carrying under his arm? Uh, it's, uh, it's a Time magazine. Oh, no. It's probably this week I haven't even read it. Please, oh, sir. Hank will be on top of everything. World affairs, law, economics, the movie reviews. I'll sound like a dodo out there. 10 seconds. He'll be bright. He'll be witty and out. Senator, the Senator, oh, don't oh. put your thumb in your mouth. Unless... Unless he only had time to look at Time Magazine's cover. Oh, no. Uh, stand by, please. Hank, I don't even know who's on Time's cover this week. Yeah. Can you see who's on Time's cover? Oh, I can. What if they ask me who's on Time's yeah. cover? What am I going to And now, the candidates' debate. On the left, we have the incumbent, Senator Ethel Apple Merman. No, she was on the cover of something else. Uh, Senator um, Alice Cooper or Abe Bean. Yeah, Senator, all we want. I know what you want. Is it a picture of a shark? Just the name. The shark didn't have a name. Give me a hint. Robo Senator. Blackie. Time makes everything more interesting. Interesting, including you. Dreams. We all seek to understand the many ways in which God reveals his word. Throughout time, God has spoken to man in dreams. Jehovah said in the Old Testament, Listen to my word. If a man be a prophet, I make myself known to him in vision. I speak to him in dreams. So, pay attention to your own dreams. They might well reveal flashes of the future, predictions and warnings of things to come. They may give you a glimpse of God's guidance to lead you back to the peace and security of his way. For your free booklet on dreams, write to the Foundation Church, 1147 First Avenue, New York, New York, 10021. That's the Foundation Church, 1147 First Avenue, New York, New York, 10021. Mark Twain, being duly sworn, deposes as follows. This curious history was related to me by a chance 
railroad acquaintance. He was a gentleman of more than 70 years of age, and his thoroughly good and gentle face and earnest and sincere manner imprinted the unmistakable stamp of truth upon every statement which fell from his lips. He said, It was in the year 18 and uh, 7, uh, 8, or was it uh, 7, 7? No, no, no matter. I was a major in Her Imperial Majesty's Bengal Lancers in India, you know. And one morning, no, uh, uh, it was at lunch. Or oh, it might have been in the evening. Uh, anyway, I was summoned by my commanding officer, Colonel Sunday Hogan Yale. Or had he been recalled, then it uh, well, is no matter. As I say, I was summoned. Uh, uh, sit down, Smather. Sit. Uh, do you know where Ty Am is? Well, I suppose I might find it on the map, Colonel. Well, it seems that the king there kicked up no end of a row about the border or some such rot. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, cheeky beggar. Well, he was treated to a whiff of grape shot, I can tell you. That brought him to his senses. He was quick enough. Uh, yes, sir. Well, as a sign of his gratitude, he intends to send Her Majesty a token of his esteem. Oh, yes, sir. An elephant. An elephant? A white elephant. Oh. Uh, why a white elephant? It uh, uh, seems it's a sacred animal and all that sort yes, of thing. But whatever will the Queen do with a white elephant? Ours uh, not to reason why, Smathers. You are placed in command of the White Elephant Party. Yes, sir. I must remind you that the fate of Her Majesty's Indian Empire is in your hands. Yes, sir. Therefore, you are to guard the beast with your life. It shall be done, sir. It's up to you, Smathers, to deliver this White Elephant into the hands of the Queen. Into her hands? Smathers, England expects every man to do his duty. <laughs> A ship was fitted out for me, and my servants and all officers and attendants of the elephant. And together with the elephant, we sailed across the Pacific and landed at San Francisco. There, a special train awaited us, and we crossed your great country, arriving a week later in the city of New York. En route, I had come to know my charge rather well. <laughs> we spent many happy hours together. <laughs> He was a rather an intelligent elephant, taken by a large, but he, he did have a somewhat limited vocabulary. Well, we arrived in New York, and I placed my charge in admirable quarters while we awaited the boat that was to take us home again to England. I, meanwhile, was enjoying the sights of your fine metropolis, little realizing the catastrophe that lay in store. And then, late one night... My slumber was disturbed by my agitated servant. Ah, Sahib, ah, Sahib, ah, leave the land of ah, dreams. Ah, Arise, come awake. Oh, oh, oh. Sahib, there is news. Uh, news. Uh, uh, Ganga Das? What is it? What? Ominous news, Sahib. Frightening news. Ganga Das, will you just tell me what? The elephant. Oh, yes, yes, the elephant. The sacred white elephant. Our elephant. Our, well, what about the elephant? The elephant is gone. Gone? Stolen. Oh, no, don't say that. I would say something else if that would make the Sahib happy. I rushed to the building where we had caught the elephant, and there was a gaping hole in the back wall, as if somebody had broken through the bricks and masonry and thus been able to make away with the elephant. Oh, yes, the place was in ruin, and so was my career. I had failed. The fate of the empire had been placed in my hands, and I had faltered. I could look forward only to ruin and disgrace. And then I remembered that I was in New York, where the head of the detective force was the celebrated Inspector Lump. Oh, if anyone could save me, if anyone could restore that elephant. You realize, Major Smathers, the Herculean nature of this assignment? Oh, indeed, Inspector, I do. An elephant, especially a white elephant, 
One does not easily lay one's hands on a creature of this sort in New York. Oh, I realize this, Inspector. There are hundreds, virtually thousands of places where one could hide a white elephant. That is true. Why? Uh, if you weren't looking for him, you could pass him on a street and hardly notice him. And of course, I appreciate the difficulty, but tell me, tell me that you will take the case. Inspector Blunt, you are my only hope. A stolen white elephant. Think of it. Trying to find a stolen white elephant. It's got looking for a needle in a haystack beat all holler. Major Smathers, I'm your man. Inspector Blunt. Oh, I tell you, he was a man to inspire confidence. He was a tall, thin man with a strong, compact frame. A person of no common order. Calm and in command. This is no ordinary case. Every step must be warily taken. Oh, yes, sir. And secrecy must be observed. Of course. Not just plain secrecy, but profound secrecy. I understand. Speak to no one. Not even to the reporters. I will handle the press personally. I will tell the fourth estate only what it will suit my ends to let them know. Now, the business, systematically. But nothing can be accomplished in the detective business without strict and minute methods. Oh, I'm sure I agree, Inspector. Now then, the name of the elephant. Ah, oh, his name, yes. Hassan Ben Ali Ben Selim Abdallah Mohammed Al Hamul Yamsakichip Boyd Blut Sultan A.B. Budpour. Do you have a nickname? Jumbo. Place of birth? Siam. Parents living or dead? Dead, I believe. A positive. Well, is it important? That one must be thorough in these affairs. Now, can you describe this elephant? Oh, yes, of course. He was a white elephant. I'm afraid we must do better than that. Height? 19 feet. Length from apex of forehead to insertion of tail. Twenty-six feet. Length of trunk? Uh, sixteen feet. Length of tusk? Uh, nine and a half feet. Any distinguishing marks? Distinguishing marks. Well, now, it would seem to me that... My I... dear Major, this minute detail may be boring to you, but the fact is, the more closely we can describe the elephant, the easier he'll be to identify. <laughs> Well, I don't know about Marks, Inspector, but you might also add that he likes to squirt water on people. Uh, through his trunk, of course. Oh. Well, we'll be able to identify him now beyond the shadow of a doubt. How are it? I have 50,000 copies of this description printed at once and mailed to every detective office and pawn shop on a continent. Pawn shop, Inspector? A favorite destination for thieves with stolen merchandise. Oh, I hadn't... Also, sir. Now, it'll be necessary to offer a reward. Hmm. And what sum would you suggest, Inspector? To begin, $25,000. $25,000? Well, it's an intricate, difficult case. There are a thousand avenues of escape and unlimited opportunities of concealment. And these thieves have friends everywhere. These thieves? <laughs> then you, you do know who they are. Never mind about that. I may, I may not. It'll be necessary to describe this elephant further. Guidance further? I, I thought we'd given a fairly detailed... We haven't scratched the surface. If he has any peculiar eating habits, say, that'll make him easier to notice. What does he eat? What does he eat? Oh, well, he, he eats anything. He must be more precise. Well, then, Inspector, he will eat a man. Yes. He will also eat a Bible. You can say he would eat anything between a man and the Bible. I'm afraid that's too general. Details are what are needed in our business. Now, as to men, how many men will he eat at one meal or one day if they're fresh? Well, he wouldn't care if they're fresh or not. At a single meal, he would eat five ordinary men. Five men. Yeah, let me write that down. What nationalities would he prefer? Rest of that is completely indifferent. <laughs> so much for men. What else will he eat? Well, he would eat uh, bricks, bottles, clothing, um, cats, oysters, ham, sugar, pie, potatoes, hay, oats, uh, <laughs> everything really except 
boarding house rice pudding. So why does he drink? Anything that flows, milk, water, whiskey, molasses, it's no use to go into particulars. Whatever fluid occurs to you, just to set it down. Oh, of course, he, he will drink anything except European coffee. Thank you, Major. You have provided us with excellent clues. How are us? Detail detectives Jones, Davis, Halsey, Bates, and Hackett to shadow the elephant. And detail detectives Moses, Bacon, Murphy, Rogers, Copper, Higginbotham, and Bartholomew to shadow the thieves. The thieves? Ah, then you do know. Oh, this is uncanny. Alaric! Place detectives at all terminals and docks and all roadways leading out of the city to watch for the stolen white elephant. Dispatch detectives as far north as Canada, as far west as California, as far south as Florida. And remember, it must all be done with the utmost secrecy. That'll be all. Oh, Inspector Blunt, I marvel at how much ground you've covered in so short a time. Well, one does these things by instinct, Major Smathers. Yes. Is there anything I can do to help? Yes. You must maintain secrecy. Ah, of course. So far, no one knows of the theft except the thieves, your servants, yourself, and I, and my men. I shall see to it that my servants say nothing at all. Good. Inspector Bunt, you realize the international crisis that can be created if that elephant isn't found soon? Yes. Then, can you give me some hope? Major Smathers, I am not given to boasting. It is not my style. But we shall find your elephant. <laughs> You heard all the details Inspector Blunt demanded. And what is genius but the capacity for taking infinite pains? And it's just as well. Because if you're looking for a stolen elephant in the city of New York, you certainly need a genius to find him for you. I expect to find you waiting here for me when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. Isn't it nice to know you're free? It was big news last year when Buick introduced its free-spirited V6, an engine that's gutsy like a V8, but practical like a 6. Well, this year, we're putting that V6 into a brand new package, the full-size 1976 Lefebvre. Think about that for a minute. A car with room and comfort for six, a big trunk, lots of standard comfort and convenience, a car with all that, and V6 power, too. The saver, it's more free-spirited than ever. V6, Le Saber, not available in California. Time, August 15th, 1944. Keeping pressure on the forces of Germany, the Allies decide to make a massive landing on the southern coast of France. Hundreds of Allied ships wait quietly for the signal to launch. This is James Drury with Navy Chronicle. Allied chiefs of staff meet. Plans are made. Efforts are coordinated. The attack will close the gap between campaigns in Italy and Normandy. After four months of preliminary bombing, ending in a massive airstrike by our 1,400 planes, nearly 900 United States and British ships put thousands of troops ashore. A force of nine escort aircraft carriers provide air cover and close air support for the assault. The Allied warships destroy opposing enemy shore guns. The invasion is a speedy success, and the United States Navy was there. You've been listening to Navy Chronicle, an historical series with James Drury and the U.S. Navy Band. Poor Major Smathers of the British Army in India. He has been entrusted with a sacred white elephant to bring home as a gift to Queen Victoria. While stopping over in New York, the elephant has been stolen. But Smathers has every reason to be hopeful. 
After all, the search is in the reliable hands of Detective Inspector Blunt, than whom, well, let us pick up the Major's story. Awake, awake, Sahib. It is only I, thy servant or protector of the poor. What? What? Has not the heaven-born wish to read the newspaper? Oh, oh, it's you, Ganga Das. Oh, what a dream. What a dream. Inspector Blunt has sent them. Inspector Blunt? Who, 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 who is Inspector uh, Blunt? The police, Sahib. Oh, oh, then it's no dream. It, it happened. The elephant has been stolen. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember now. And I did talk to the world's greatest detective, Inspector Blunt. If the center of the universe will deign to look, it is in all the newspapers. The news? Well, well, how could it be in the newspapers? Inspector Blunt said that it must be kept secret. It was the mighty police sahib himself. You see what it says in the papers? Uh, let, me, let me see. Inspector Blunt, confident stolen white elephant will be recovered. Huh? Inspector Blunt expects immediate arrest. Blunt says the international intrigue behind great white elephant theft. Blunt says elephant was stolen to effect succession of British throne. Oh, wait till I see that man. <laughs> but, Inspector, you said the papers must not be told. They must not be told unless they ask. And when they ask, they must be told. Do you understand? I uh, Detectives uh, must keep on the good side of the newspapers. But why? My good fellow. Fame, fortune, reputation, constant public mention. These are a detective's bread and butter. He must publish his facts and his theories. Well, you know what will happen? No. It will be assumed that he has none. Therefore, we must publish our plans. We must show the public what we're doing, or they will assume we're doing nothing. Isn't it better to have a newspaper say, Inspector Blunt's extraordinary theory is as follows, than to have them print something harsh or sarcastic? Ah, yes, I see your point, of course. Uh, but, for instance, in the Gazette you say that although the rear wall of the building was torn out and the only door was locked, you didn't believe that the thieves had removed the elephant through the open space, but they took him out through some, um, as yet, undiscovered outlet. Exactly. Well, then why did the thieves trouble to make the hole in the wall? To mislead me. But I'm too clever for them. Oh. Uh, but it also says in the papers that the $25,000 reward is only being offered to detectives. Is that quite correct? Oh, yes, indeed. But it would seem to me that the reward should be offered to anyone who would find the elephant. Ah, uh, yes. But it's the detectives who will find the elephant. Now, if some other people were to find him, it would only be because they were watching the detectives and taking advantage of the clues that they stole from the detectives. So you see, regardless of who finds the elephant, it's the detectives who deserve the credit and the reward. Ah, yes, of course, that does sound reasonable. Aha, first report coming in. Now, let's see. That one have we here. Ah, I've got a clue. Found succession of deep tracks across a farm. Shall follow them. Detective Darley, Flower Station, New York. I see, that's absolutely marvelous. Well, Darley's our best man. Your beast is as good as found. Aha. Uh -huh. Just arrived at Barker, New Jersey. Glass factory broken into during night. Have eyewitness reports of elephants. I'm staying with it. Detective Baker. One of my top people, that Baker. Yes, but Jeremy, how could the elephant be in both New York and New Jersey? Be assured, Major. There is a rational explanation. Well, then, what is it? Uh, wait a minute. Another telegram. Shadowed elephant tracks three miles. Large, deep, ragged they were. Met a farmer who says they're not elephant tracks at all, but holes where he dug up trees last year. Dolly, Detective Flower Station, New York. How do you account for that? Well, this farmer, this alleged farmer, is obviously a confederate of the thieves. His purpose is to deceive Dolly. Alaric! Send the following coded message to Dolly. Arrest the farmer and continue to follow the tracks. 
Set up a traffic if necessary. That, you see, the wires are humming. Coney Point, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Oh, yes, yes. This operation is national in scope. Ah, gas company office broken into during night. And huge three-month stack of unpaid gas bills taken. Looks good for our side. Murphy, detective. Good heavens, Major. Would he eat gas bills? Oh, yes. Gas bills, water bills, coal bills, grocery bills. The beast is omnivorous. Inspector Blunt. Oh, ho. Send her in. Well, now, progress indeed. I am about to interview a special informant. Informant, Inspector? Yes. We have strings into the underworld. A job like this cannot be kept secret within the criminal fraternity. Major, you're about to witness the solution of the case. Oh, Lily, sit down. What do you want? You know what I want? Information. I don't know nothing. Now, Lily, this is no way to talk to an old friend. I don't know nothing. Tell me about the elephant, Lily. The elephant? What elephant? You want to know about elephants? Go to the circus. Now, Lily, you have already made your ritual objection. Whatever that is, I didn't do it. I even got an alibi. So, let us get down to business. Look, I'm out of the business now, Inspector, so so help me. I'm going straight. Who would steal an elephant? Are you kidding? Who would steal a white elephant? Oh, a white elephant. <laughs> you should have said so in the first place. A white elephant. Let me see. Uh, name's on the tip of my tongue. Would it be by any chance Bodge Criswell? Bodge Criswell, yes. Yeah. Barge. How do you know? How do I know? Oh, he's been all over town bragging about how he's done it. Is that a fact? Yeah. Everybody knows it's Barge. You sure? Oh, sweet, what on a stack of Bible. Sounds too pat, Lily. You sure you're not making this up? Why would I make it up? Oh, come on. Have I ever given you a bum steer, Inspector? Why would Barge, Criswell, or anyone else steal a white elephant? That's what I asked him. Just the other night. I said to him, Barge, tell me. Now, why would you steal a white elephant? You know what he does? He just looked at me and he said, Why would I steal a white elephant? Because he's there. <laughs> ah, that crazy barge creep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Lily. That will be all. Uh, you don't want me to tell you nothing else, Inspector? You may go now. <laughs> Anytime, Inspector. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't take any wooden nickels, Inspector. <laughs> well, I tell you, Inspector, I mean it's nothing short of miraculous. If I hadn't witnessed it with my own eyes, I... I how you drew the information from her, such subtlety, such skill. Routine in this profession, my dear Major. <laughs> and what is your next move? Our next move is to apprehend the thieves and collect your elephant. Yes, but uh, where is he? Shouldn't it be obvious? Well, to a genius, yes. To me, no. He is here. Here? Right here. In New York City. New York. But the telegram... Cleverly arranged for by Criswell's crewman to throw us off the scent. The elephant's been here all the time. Ah, yes. But, but where? In Criswell's apartment. In Criswell's apartment? Oh. Of course. And now we shall recover your beast, Major. You may wire your government, tell them the matter is settled, the case is closed. And now we move in for the kill. Alaric! I want 100 men armed to the teeth. We will surround the home of Barge Criswell. We will take him, dead or alive. I wonder, may I come along, Inspector? Are you armed, Major? I have a revolver. Good. Uh, what was that? What was what? Well, that, that sound. What sound? Well, I could have sworn that I heard the elephant. The elephant? Yes, the elephant, as if, as if he were... As if what? Well, as if he was somewhere in this very building. How could he be in this building? Somewhere deep in this building. You realize, of course, that that's impossible. Oh, but, uh, but I'm so sure that I heard him. I... Oh, yes, yes, you probably did. After all, if I didn't know better... It would be possible to think that he could be here. <laughs> the place from which he was stolen was just down the street. Major, 
It's entirely possible that you did hear him. Is it? You heard him because you wanted to hear him. I don't understand. We're about to capture him. You are so filled with anticipation that in your mind, you can actually hear him. Ah, yes. That accounts for it. Well, shall we proceed? The sight of a task force of New York City detectives about to spring a trap on a band of desperate criminals is awesome indeed. As a military man, I had nothing but praise. In just a few hours, every detective was in his place. The house was surrounded. The neighborhood sealed off. And we were ready to move in for the kill. Be careful, Major. Keep under cover. But I intend to take an active part in this operation. Very well. Watch, Creswell! What? We know you're in there. The house is surrounded. There's no hope of escape. Bart, come out. He ain't here. A likely story. Bart, send out the elephant. What elephant? You know what elephant. Bart, send out the elephant and then come out with all your men. Barge ain't here. The elephant ain't here. There ain't nobody here but me. Barge, I'll count to three. And if you're not out here by then, we'll come in and get you. One. But I tell you, Barge ain't here. Two. He ain't here. Barge, I said two. Barge ain't here. The elephant ain't here. Ain't nobody here but me. Very well, Barge. If you want to hide behind a woman's skirt, it won't help you. I'll count to three again. One, two, three. All right, man, let's rush the house. Ah! And so the assault is on. And a full-fledged battle it is, too, from the sound of it. A dangerous business, this, being a detective, especially when the quest is for a sacred white elephant. Inspector Blunt has woven a tight tapestry of clues and deductions. Surely, success should crown his efforts at last. Well, wait for the third act, which I shall bring here in just a few moments. Who will cope with tomorrow for a brighter day? There's one hope for tomorrow, the children of today. There is only one hope for tomorrow, the children. Yet there are children in this world right now who have no hope for a brighter today. They're hungry, illiterate, living in misery, and when they grow up, if they grow up, they'll pass on this hopelessness. And it's the world's loss and the world's shame. You can help children to grow up with healthy bodies and educated minds, with a zest for life that they'll pass on to their children and to our world. Won't you please send a check to Save the Children Federation, Box 970 Grand Central Station, New York 10017. That's Save the Children, Box 970 Grand Central Station, New York 10017. Think about tomorrow. We've got to save the children and save Here's a different kind of a mystery for you. How can you be in four places at once? It's no mystery at Northwest Federal Savings. Every Northwest Federal Saver can be in four places at once in all four Northwest Federal Savings Centers. How? Well, the minute you become a Northwest Federal Saver, our computer registers you in all four places. Open your account at any savings center, and you can use any office anytime you want to make a deposit or a withdrawal or to pay utility bills. You can do all this and more in the Northwest Federal Savings Center nearest you. So come visit Irving Park, west of Cicero, in Des Plaines, Norwich, and now Arlington Heights at Algonquin and Golf Road. Now the only mystery is how Northwest Federal can make it even easier for you to save. Remember, we keep trying 63 hours a week. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. 
This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. Hazardous driving conditions at this hour. Freezing drizzle at two page. Snow at mix. This is WBBM in Chicago at the time 11. How does one find a white elephant in New York? Especially when it's been stolen by a band of experienced, resourceful, and desperate thieves. Well, one turns the famous police inspector Blunt loose. One watches Blunt use all of his almost miraculous powers of deduction. And one sees him march inexorably to where his quarry is hidden. Have we any casualties? Five men dead, Inspector. But, Inspector, how was that possible? We were the only ones who fired. No shots came from the house. Uh, being a detective is the most hazardous of all professions, Major. But uh, what do we do now? Man, cover me. I'm going in there myself. And I shall go with you. Open the door, or we shall break it down. Is your revolver loaded, Major? Yes, sir. Be ready for anything. What's all the noise about? Hi, where is he? Where is who? Madam, I advise you, do not play the fool. Where is the elephant? How could I have an elephant in here? I ask the questions, madam. You furnish the answers. That is the nature of our relationship. Is that understood? Yeah. Now then, where is Barge Criswell? Barge Criswell? Where is he? You ought to know where he is. Madam, I warn you. He's dead. Your lies cannot save him. You're crazy. Barge Criswell's been dead these 15 years. Madam, I shall arrest you as a material witness. Barge was hanged. Yeah, hanged? You arrested him yourself. Here, I still keep the newspaper story. Yeah. You see? Barge Criswell hang. Ah, uh, hand me that. Uh, brilliant detective work by Inspector Blunt led to the conviction and hanging of the notorious Barge Cri... Then it's true. He is dead. Even a detective would know that. <laughs> The clues, all the clues led to... Uh, it had to be Criswell. Oh, please, Inspector, don't be distressed. Major, you must admit the only reason Criswell is innocent of the crime is because he happens to be dead. Quite right, Inspector. Do you still have faith in me, Major? <laughs> My faith is not some fair-weather trust to be dispelled by the first clouds. You... Don't know how much that means to me. I shall make the recovery of your white elephant my life's work. I will find him if it kills me. Perhaps we'd better double the reward. Consider it done. Sir. I. What was that? Yes. Yes, I think I heard it. It sounded like the editor. Ah. Uh... As, 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 as if he's right here. Right here. Our ears deceive us, Major. Oh, but I could... I could have sworn I just heard... No, no, no. We want to hear him. Rest assured, we soon shall. I am now constructing an entirely new theory concerning the motives and modus operandi of the International Band of Elephant Thieves. International? That was my fatal mistake. I was too, uh, parochial. Too limited in my quest. Yes, indeed. The insidious hand of a foreign power is very much in evidence. I have every faith that you are correct, Inspector. Ah, but if I had faith, the same could not be said for the local and international press. Every day, new reports were received of elephant sightings and further stories of his wild depredations. The headlines would read, Harvest demolished, factories destroyed, death and devastation. Inspector Blunt has a new theory. Inspector Blunt has a newer theory. Inspector Blunt fooled again. I was so disturbed by all this 
But uh, not the inspector. My dear Smathers, this is all deliberate on my part. I am spreading these stories to lull the thieves into thinking they're safe. Ah. To make them think they're dealing with an incompetent fool. Therefore, they shall become careless and make the fatal error that will seal their doom. Do you understand? Of course I understand. Ah. <laughs> the sheer brilliance of that strategy takes my breath away. It is merely standard detective procedure. But to allow yourself to be unfairly pictured and caricatured as a buffoon... One must play the hand one is dealt and hope for a vindication of history. In heaven's name. Did you hear... Imagination. Sheer imagination. But I could have sworn it was the elephant. No, no, no. Pay no attention. Uh Uh-huh. A message from Darley. Hogan's Port, Ohio. Elephant passed through half hour ago, creating panic. Raids through streets. Killing two plumbers. A traveling salesman and a sheriff. Ah. And this is from Gloversville, New York. Elephant broke up anti-temperance meeting here this evening, placing his trunk through the window, and he washed it out. Whole region in terror and pursuing him. Signed, Murphy. But but, but, but how could the elephant be in both Ohio and New York? Major, this is no ordinary elephant. And here we have no ordinary case. Oh, yes, that is true, I suppose. But why do I keep hearing the elephant so clearly? You mean, why do you think you hear him so clearly? Well, I wish that... Yes? I... What do you wish? I, uh, nothing, Inspector. No, I have faith in you. I shall have faith in you to the death. <laughs> protector of the poor has a visitor. Oh, dear. Who, who is it, Ganga Das? A highly placed person, the British ambassador. And the, well, what, of, what, what are you waiting for? Show him in. If the center of the universe will permit, I have never seen a more angry sahib in my entire unimportant existence. Oh, dear, but I can't help it, Ganga Das, so show him in. Rotten show, Smathers. Uh, it is indeed, Lord Churlish. No end of a flap, you know. I understand. Well, but where can the beggar be hiding? Well, that, that, that's the problem. We want her elephant, dear boy, don't you know? Well, I'm sure she does. Every day she asks the PM, Mr. Gladstone, where's my elephant? I am sorry about that, sir. And, of course, all he can give her are excuses. As she looks at him, she says, Well, I'm sure dear Mr. Disraeli would have no trouble finding my elephant if he were Prime Minister. It's reached that point, sir. Oh, yes, government's about to fall any day. Where is that blooming elephant? Well, we we, we are making progress. We? Uh, Inspector Blunt and the New York police. Of course, Smathers. Well, it's your show, but I've taken the liberty to sound out Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? He would be willing to take ship for New York and find the elephant within 48 hours. I see, sir. Am I being ordered to dismiss Inspector Blunt and hire Mr. Sherlock Holmes? No, no, my boy. You are being advised. Ad- well, then I shall think it over. Oh, yes, I would do that. Because if the elephant is not found immediately, you shall be court-martialed, dismissed from the service, tried for treason, and either imprisoned or hanged. Is that clear? <laughs> I believe the reward should be higher. Well, it, it's 150000 now. Yes, well, the case is extremely complex. Well, whatever you think best, of course. <laughs> oh, no, Inspector Blunt. I could swear. That... <laughs> this may be the very news I've waited for. I'm on his track. He cannot be more than 15 minutes ahead of me. Detective Darley, Rosebush, Michigan. Inspector, don't you think that we should... This is it. Blue Cheese, Wisconsin. Elephant sighted in field two miles north. Signed, Detective Stump. Major, we've got him now. We've got him. Are you sure? Positive. He is now in the midst of my men. He and the miscreants who have abducted him. Go home, Major. Get some rest. 
You shall be notified as soon as he's been returned here. Awake, Protector of the Poor. Uh, what's the matter? A message from the Sahib of the Police. News. What kind of news? Great news. Oh, yes? Hassan Ben Ali Ben Salim uh, Abdullah. That's all, Ganga Das. What about Hassan Ben Ali Ben Salim Abdullah Muhammad Ed Hamali? He has been found. <laughs> Quiet, boys, quiet. It is now my pleasure to divide the $150,000 reward money among all the fine men who crack this case. Hey, 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 hey. Inspector, I, I came as quickly as I could. All right, quiet now, boys. Let's hear it for Major Smathers, who never lost faith. Hey! You, uh, you found him? Where is he? In a cellar. The cellar? The cellar of this building. But hurry. Oh, my stars, it is. It is Hassan bin Salim. You want to know how we found him? Yes, oh, please. I revisited the scene of the crime, hoping, of course, that the burglars would do the same thing. They do that, you know. Ah, yes. Hassan, Hassan. Sometimes they revisit the scene Hassan, of the crime. Hassan, say, say something. I noticed hairs on some of the broken bricks. And then in a sudden flash Hassan. of intuition, I saw the whole thing. Hassan had broken a wall himself. Do you suppose he's asleep? No, he's not asleep. Oh. And then I noticed footprints in the ground. And I followed those footprints. Why is he lying there so quietly? He's dead. Oh. The footprints led through the alleyway. Yes. Oh. And, and oh, there was no, a no. hole in the wall in the back of our building. And he must have fallen through it down here to the basement, and he couldn't get out. Hassan dead? He, uh, died here of starvation. That poor beast. Hey, Inspector Blunt, I appear a telegram from Detective Dorix from Monroe, Utah. Have followed Delephant's track. Ah, oh, and... that Dolly. One of the finest minds on a fort. Now, look, have him return and get his share of reward. Well, Major, we found him for you. Oh, yes, Inspector. <laughs> you found him. Well, sir, I don't care what anyone says. Oh, I may be a ruined man today and a homeless wanderer on the face of the earth. But my admiration for that detective, whom I believe to be the greatest genius the world has ever produced, remains undimmed. And both he and I shall be vindicated by history. <laughs> Thus ends Mark Twain's story. And while the cynical may sneer, and the scoffers may doubt, who is to say what verdict shall be returned by history? Perhaps a greater plan, a mysterious design, did not wish for the elephant to reach the queen. Do we know? Of course not. But if this were the plan... Could two better men than Major Smathers and Inspector Blunt been selected? I'll be back in just a moment. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau on the metric system. You know, use of the metric system as a uniform system of measurement in this country is growing rapidly. But of course, you want to know how it will affect you, right? Well, take driving your car, for example. The kilometer will replace the mile in expressing distances. Right now, one mile is equal to 1,760 yards or 5,280 feet. Now, isn't it easier to remember that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters? Your car's speedometer will also change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. So will speed limit signs on the highways. And again, the standard unit of measure will be the meter. And so when you order a tank full of gas, the liquid measure will be in liters, not gallons. For example, a fill-up of 16 gallons is equal to 60 liters. For more information on the metric system, write to Metric Information Office, National Bureau of Standards, Washington, D.C.
And what is the moral of our story? Mark Twain was not fond of pointing out morals. As a matter of fact, he said, persons attempting to find a motive in this narrative will be prosecuted. Persons attempting to find a plot in it will be banished. And persons attempting to find a moral will be shot. Well, nothing of the sort will ever happen to you if you join us here seven days each week. Our cast included Ian Martin, Robert Dryden, Bryna Rayburn, and Peter Donald. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You're killing them! One of them up. Oh, those poor people. Oh, don't weep for them. They're of no value. That's the history of the world, isn't it? Well, good morning, Theodore. Oh, you startled me, Uncle Peter. I? How could I startle anyone? <laughs> uh, I didn't see you coming. Were you busy with great thoughts? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was merely talking to this... Well, there was someone here just a moment ago. Oh, yes, yes, my boy. I know it affects me, too. I keep seeing people who aren't there myself. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Time Magazine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. WBBM, Chicago, News Radio 78, the time now 1125.